In Colombia, in any major intersection, there is some person that is standing there with a huge box of every single sticker many, many times. I'm sure that they know how to do a calculation like this because they figured out the economics of how, what makes sense for them. And, and this is exactly the calculation that you want to make. You, ha you have room here to say, to say, okay, everybody else is subject to, to this randomness and this gives me room for me to make money out of the situation. That's what Panini does. And, and not only that, I'm also assuming that everybody wants Elderson et Chiegile just as much as they want Ronaldo or Messi. And that's a piece of economics that we're not taking into account here, that when you're trading in the corner, if the repeat that you have is messy, you can probably negotiate so that you can get three or four stickers out of, out of trading messy. Uh, a question lots of people are going to have, I know you don't work for Panini and therefore you don't know, have all the answers, but a lot of people are going to be thinking, a Panini fair? Do Panini print every sticker an even number of times? <laughs> can I tell you a story about that? Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a kid, uh, World Cup 1986, that was the first Panini album that I saw. And all my friends were collecting all, all the album and we were all making progress and for some reason nobody had any stickers for Argentina, Paraguay or Mexico. You're going to tell me that's random? I don't think so. Uh, clearly, back then they were, they were withholding to the, the local market that was most interested. Of course, in Colombia we most wanted to have the... Brazil also was not available, so, so we couldn't get any of the stickers that we cared the most for. And then eventually they released them all once people had spent a lot of money trying to get them. They claim they don't do this anymore, and uh, at least when I play with it, I, I don't really notice that kind of uh, skewing of the distribution. Um, but only they know. I have no idea. So there could <laughs> be one player that they only print a handful of and none of us know about. Yeah, they, they could be doing this, and it might be a who knows who. Yeah. This was four years ago. How did you do four years ago? So four years ago, it was, it was a sad situation where I didn't have a lot of people to trade with, and so I kind of bought... You can see this is about... Oh, did well I did very well in Australia, except I was missing the, the badge. I did very well in Colombia, which was the main thing, but even, I couldn't even fill Colombia. This is very frustrating. Um, but this is, I, I guess, maybe like three-fourths of the way full, so, but then you see teams like this. Well, that's like, that looks suspicious to me, like only two Uruguayan players. Like. <laughs> it's not because I don't like Uruguay, you know? Yeah. This is exactly a randomness. You should be suspicious if I had exactly ten stickers in every country. The randomness works in such a way that there's some country that you're going to get very quickly, there's some country that you're going to get very slowly. Um, I think this is good evidence that, that Panini is playing fair, actually. That uh, I've almost filled Costa Rica and I almost got no, no one from Uruguay. Um, so that's this one. Oh, Germany, 2006. Germany, 2006. I think I did even worse. I, uh, yeah. Stickers are smaller there, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I miss Messi, for example. I really wish that I had him. Uh, you can see, for example, baby Mascherano here. He was only 22 years old. And then let me show you the, the, the oldest one that I own. So I was, I was too young to collect this one. This one was my, uh, my cousin Jorge who uh, collected this one. And I have no idea why he chose to give this to me, but I'm, I'm really happy to have it. It's, it's kind of destroyed from playing with it too much. Again, but this not, is, not full. But... but this is a lovely artifact. And you can see, for example, this is Diego Armando Maradona, World Cup 82, he was 22 years old. I have another story about this. So I, I, won Italy won that World Cup, didn't they? Italy won that World Cup. Oh, yeah. um, I, play, I play soccer in the neighborhood and there's this referee that uh, I always have problems with because he always says that I dive and I don't dive. And so one time I just started kind of talking to him and telling him, oh, you don't, you, don't know, you don't know anything about soccer. And he says, oh yeah? Did you play against Maradona in the World Cup? And... <laughs> And I said, are you serious, macho? Do you, do you? And then he says, oh, go, go look it up. Look up El Team El Salvador. And sure enough, Juan Gilberto Quinteros is my referee from my recreational league. Uh, so I was very impressed. I still had to make fun of him because they lost 10 to 1 to Hungary. This is one of the worst defeats in the history of the World Cup. But still, I, that was very impressive. You got to play against Maradona in the World Cup. All lost, my respect to you. They only lost 2 0 to Argentina. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know what I take from that? Obviously, you are a diver. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I play clean. I play clean. I always thought that it was absolutely immoral to buy from Panini. Because I feel like that goes against the practice. You're supposed to, you know, have friends and trade with them. The problem is that I was a shy kid. And so I traded with people, but I was kind of shy about it. And I was not a good negotiator, never have been. And that's why I always came close to filling it, but didn't quite get there.
I played too clean, you see. Who do you most want to get? James Rodriguez. Oh, would you? No, uh, Juan Cuadrado. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about the Colombian badge? Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, say it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Who is it? Juan Cuadrado. I was just saying, this is the one I want. <laughs> no, that's the one you said, and you got it. Yes. <laughs> After just telling me all this probability about how hard it is, to get <laughs> then you're the first one you open, and it pulls it out. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna seem like we like we kind of set this up like we this. Did, <laughs> we, did not, we did not set that up. You named who you wanted, and then you opened wow. it. Wow, it's gonna be a good year. That's amazing. I think we're gonna be champions of the World Cup. This has to be a good sign. If I say that I really want it and I get it right away, and I put it first in the album, I think this is this is the year. This is finally the year. <laughs> I'm gonna fill the album. Oh, I thought you meant this. Colombia's gonna be World Cup champion. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. Where is he? Actually, this is very nerve wracking. Because to get the first one exactly right. Oh. <laughs> You're making me nervous, Brady. This is not how not to do it, people. <laughs> there we go. More or less. Beautiful. Uh, yes, it makes a difference. There's a third way of shuffling cards that is used in tournament poker games and is used in Monte Carlo. I call that schmushing. So that's this method of shuffling cards. You've probably seen somebody do that. You might have done it yourself. And then you gather them up and hope for the best.